What's going on guys, Seth here from Team Union. Seth, back as your coach of the Philadelphia Feroes for our week 8 battle uh, in the RPL Season 2. Uh, this week we are going up against the Twin Leaf Town Torteras, uh, AKA, uh, coached by Paul, a.k.a. some random fellow. i to mute my phone real quick. Um, so we are currently 7-0 with a, I believe, plus 20 differential. Um, we are the second seed currently in the playoff race. Uh, Paul is the fourth seed at 5-2. and two, So we're looking to pick up another victory, stay undefeated, and keep in that number two slot. Um, so we're going to get right into, right into the team builder. So looking at Paul's team, um, he has Protean Greninja, Cresselia, Chandelure, Venusaur, Shiftry, Hitmonchan, Tapu Koko, Muddale, Zygarde 10%, Wooper, and Mega Charizard Y. So the Wooper is kind of like a meme. Um, <laughs> if you couldn't, if you couldn't tell, uh, but definitely a little bit of a sun element, uh, the, the Mega Charizard Y and the Venusaur plus the Shift Tree, um, and Shandy can also benefit from the sun, potentially Greninja, so, um, uh, definitely something to be aware of there. Um, so, let's go back to the team real quick. Um, Greninja, obviously a huge threat, uh, being Protean, getting stab on all of its moves, definitely a threat there, and it's super fast as well. Cresselia, super bulky, I have a lot of experience with Cresselia, but I do feel like I'm sufficiently prepared for it. Shandy can be a bit of a problem if I let it get out of control, but if I can manage it decently, I'll be okay. Uh, Venusaur under Sun can be a little bit of a problem. It's not too bad against my team. Same thing goes for Shiftry, not too great. Hitmonchan I have good answers for, but if left to kind of do its thing, um, it can wreak a little bit of havoc. Tapu Koko, one of the best mods in the format, so definitely scary there. I have to be aware for a physical set, special set, support set, anything like that, so I need to make sure that I'm ready for all of those. Um, the Mudsdale... He could bring it. It's not a huge threat. I, I, I feel like I do have answers um, enough on my team. Um, the Zygarde 10%, again, another big threat. Uh, potentially Choice Banded, Thousand Arrows is scary. Outrages are scary. A, a potential dra like Lumberry Dragon Dance set could rip my team to shreds, potentially. Um, Wooper, I don't know if he's going to bring it for the meme, but I, I doubt it. Um, and then the Mega Charizard Y, obviously a, a, a crazy wall breaker. Um, it's really difficult to prepare for it, and... While, I mean, I could have prepared better for it, it would have been really hard with the team I have. The team I have does not have very good answers to Mega Charizard Y. So, the way I built is a little bit different than I normally built. Um, I kind of went one Mon at a time. And then, so I, I started with one Mon, or I actually started with two Mons. And then started to build their sets around what I felt what I felt would be good against the team. And then started to fill in holes from there. So, essentially... Um, and you'll see in the team mode, I started with Weavile and Infernape and was like, okay, what can't these two handle? What do I need to to help support these two Mons? Um, and then I just built the rest of the team from there. So a little bit different than how I normally do it. I normally lay out like six Mons that I want to use and then build sets accordingly. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So uh, we have Caesar our Infernape with the Choice Scarf and Blaze, U-Turn, Flare Blast, Rock Slide, and Earthquake, 120 in HP, 252 in Attack, 4 in Defense, 132 in Speed, and an Adamant Nature. So this Infernape is meant to be a, late, a potential late game cleaner as well as to get some chip damage throughout the game. I just need to make sure it doesn't get chipped down too much. Uh, it has coverage for the, the entire team pretty much. Um, you know, th this coverage hits them pretty well. Specifically, the, the Zard Y, um, decent against the Greninja. It, it outspeeds if the Greninja is not scarfed. Um, Earthquake is nice for the, the Coco and the Chandelure. And then Flare Blitz is there for... Flare Blitz is there for things like Venusaur Shiftry. And just for general stab. Um, next up we have Frozone Hour Weavile with Life Orb and Pickpocket, Knock Off, Icicle Crash, Ice Shard, and Toxic. Uh, this thing is mainly there to put offensive pressure on the team and to really be a huge wall breaker, especially for the Cresselia. Um, we outspeed the Greninja if it's not Scarfed, and the Toxic is mainly there for the Cresselia. Ice Shard, Okos, the Zydogs, the Zygar 10%, Knock Off, um, Knock Off 3-hit KO is a fully defensive Cresselia. However, we can Toxic it if necessary if we see that it's fully defensive. Um, so we can just kind of go from there. And then Icicle Crash, just a good, a good hard-hitting move to go from there. Um, and that's pretty much it. This thing just puts a lot of pressure on the team with the knockoff from the Icicle Crash. Next up, we have Stormbreaker, our Jolteon, with the Assault Vest and Volt Absorb. Volt Switch, Shadow Ball, HP Ground, and Signal Beam. 252 in attack, or special attack, 64 in speed, in special defense. 192 in speed with a Timid Nature. I forgot I did, I forgot to go over Weavile's. Uh, EVs 252 in attack, 224 in special defense, 232 in speed with the Jolly Nature. Jolly Nature allows that speaker ninja. A little bit of special bulk to take Moonblast from Cresselia. All that good stuff. 
Uh, our Stormbreaker. So this is our main check to the Coco. If he brings physical Coco, it's a little bit more of a problem. Um, but Rhyperior, as you can see on screen, handles it a little bit better there. So this is if he brings a special Coco. Obviously, we're not taking anything from the uh, from the electric moves. The Assault Vest helps us take Dazzling Gleams a little bit better. The speed, allow, again, allows us to outspeed the Greninja. Um, this thing's going to be nice for Volt Switching because looking at his team... Um, the only Volt Switch immunity he has is the Zygarde and the Mudsdale. And I can't really see Zygarde wanting to switch in on this thing, especially it, with it outspeeding and potentially having HP Ice. Uh, Mudsdale could be a thing, but I don't know. I feel like I can switch into the Mudsdale, the Muds, the Mudsdale decently. Um, I mean, the team doesn't overall switch into it, but I don't really think he's going to bring it. If he does, Weavile can handle it decently. Um, you know, we have dec decent answers. Next up, we have uh, the, th uh, the Thing, our Rhyperior, Shookaberry, and Solid Rock, Stealth Rock, Ice Punch, Rock Slide, and Toxic. 248, 248 in HP, 8 in attack, 252 in defense with an impish nature. I can't talk today. I apologize. It's a lot later than I usually record. Um, Stealth Rock are going to be very important, especially for that Zard Y, to limit its switch-ins. Ice Punch, this is our main check for the, the, uh, the Zydog. Um, yeah, it's the main check for the Zydog. We can switch into... A banded, a jolly banded thousand arrows we can switch into. Take another one, um, and then get an ice punch off. Toxic is there for the crest. I'd like to lead with this thing. Um, only take a little bit of damage potentially, uh, but we'll see there. I, he's pro I think he's probably gonna lead with Greninja. Um, so we'll see what I want to do at team preview. We'll see if he even brings the Zydog. Dog. If not, then this thing is more uh, is I'm able to get rid of it a little bit more. Uh, it's more expendable. Um, and the Toxic is there for the Cresselia, just in case we end up in some some sort of Soul War with that thing. Uh, next up, we have Blue, our Sylveon, uh, Hyper Voice, Psy Shock, Wish, and Protect, 248 in HP, 252 in Defense, 8 in Special Attack with the Bold Nature. We have a Kebia Berry and Pixelate. Um, the Kebia Berry allows us to take a Gunk Shot from the Greninja. We can fire up, fire back with a Psy Shock because it'll, from the Protein it'll be um, Psychic type and does 68 to 80% to a normal standard Greninja. Um, and then we can potentially switch out and make moves from there. But we shall see what goes on with that. Um, this is also mainly here just to be a decent a decent physical pivot. Uh, and also can wish up and heal the rest of the team. <clears throat> uh, and then last but not least, we have Mind, our Sableye, with the Leftovers and Prankster. Toxic, Recover, Calm Mind, and Shadow Ball, 248 in HP, 8 in Special Attack, 252 in Special Defense, at the Calm Nature. So this thing is kind of a secondary Greninja check. Um, looking to... Uh, get a Toxic off on it, potentially whittle it down a little bit so that that Psy Shock eventually does kill it from the Sylveon. Um, and then this thing can take two Hydro Pumps, barely. Um, barely takes two Hydro Pumps from a Greninja. Um, so I'm thinking about taking one, Calm Mind, take another, Recover Up, and then continue to potentially Calm Mind. Um, and, you know, Toxic stall it out, Shadow Ball is there just for general coverage for the team. So... That is it for the team builder. Um, I'm going to send the challenge. I apologize for being seeming a little off today, um, but I'm going to send Paul the challenge. So, if you guys don't know, if you guys watched last season the RPL, Paul beat me twice: once in the regular season and once in the uh, the playoffs, I believe. And uh, I don't know. It's just I don't want to lose again. <laughs> I don't want to lose this man again. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm pretty confident in this team. I built one version of the team first, and then I just built this second one, and I'm way more comfortable with it. So we see both ground types. Okay. Um, yeah, I built this second version of the team. I'm way more comfortable with it. So we see both ground types uh, in the Mudsdale and the Zydog. Uh, no Crest, which is fine. No Shandy, which is pretty good. All right. So, I mean, not too much different than what I expected. So we see the Zydog. Uh, we see the Coco. We see Zard. Y. We see Gren. We see Mudsdale. And we see the Venusaur. All right. So, here we go. Um, my lead could be Rhyperior. I'm really thinking he's going to lead with either Coco or the Greninja. So, I think Jolteon is not the worst lead in the world. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into Jolteon. There's a Coco. 
Um, so we have decent answers to this. I'm thinking a U-turn is probably incoming here. Um, I'm thinking the U-turn is probably coming. Um, and with that being the case, uh, I feel like a U-turn into Mudsdale is probably the most likely. Um, and I kind of just want to, kind of just want to go for a Shadow Ball off of that. Um, if I double into, if I double into Caesar, how much are we doing with Caesar? How much is an earthquake doing to this thing? Fine, I guess. Earthquake does a lot. Um, kind of just want a Shadow Ball for some damage. Maybe gauge the set on that. Mudsdale. I don't know, maybe Signal Beam would be better. Both of those moves are kind of pointless now. Um, what does he bring in on the... What does he bring in on Infernape? We'll go into Infernape. There's a double. Alright, so we see the double into the Mudsdale. Okay. So that, not very surprising. Um, that's not too surprising. I kind of want to, I'm going to take some time. Um, I'm going to make him think, I'm trying to think about my move. Um, and then I'm just going to go for a U-turn. So now I'm going to go for the U-turn. See if he switches out. Um, he's probably going to be predicting something like a Grass Knot. Which could potentially be for the, the Gren or the Mudsdale or the Whooper. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the matchup is kind of weird. He's got a very offensive team. And I tend to let things go pretty fast before I need to. So, Weavile has a field day with this team. Wow. Weavile has a field day with this team. If the sun isn't up, Weavile destroys this team. Wow, Ice Shard is going to... I mean, it's a Life Orb. Life Orb Ice Shard has got to be doing a lot to Coco. Um, yeah, man. Weavile is good in this matchup. I definitely want to keep Weavile for that late game. So, I mean, it outspeeds the Zydog. And he can even Ice Shard. There's a U-turn. We see the Stamina. Um, I'm actually going to calc that set. And see how much we're doing to a Mudsdale. That did 18%. Um, looks about right. Maybe a little bit more defense. So, I'm going to double into my physically defensive blue. As we see in EQ. And we see the lefties. Okay. So we see the lefties. And we see the earthquake. So in hindsight, I definitely think I underprepared for the Mudsdale. I didn't really expect it to come, but I should have been a little bit more prepared for it. Um, like Mega Bro would have probably been decent against this team. Not like, maybe not great, but it would have been decent. I kind of just want to wish and see what he wants to do. Does this thing get any? Does this thing get any poison type moves? Oh, it gets Heavy Slam. It does get Heavy Slam? I know that. Um. Yeah, probably going to go for a Heavy Slam at this point. Um, dude, I don't know what to do with this thing now. I think i got to go into Sableye. How much is a Heavy Slam doing a Sableye? Because, I, I mean, Heavy Slam is really nasty against this team. Heavy Slam doesn't do... Oh, it does more than half. That's if he's attack invested. I'm going to double into Sableye. Predicting the Heavy Slam. Yeah, there we see it. it does, it's a crit. does a lot of damage. So I'm pretty free to Toxic here. I could also recover. Um, man... You're at plus one. Nope. Stop that. There we go. You're at plus one defense. We do just over half with the Weavile. Oh man. 
Yeah, this is not good. I don't know whether to recover. I'm gonna recover. And see what he wants to do from here. Definitely gonna recover. There's a Zard. So I'm am I I'm fully specially defensive. Yeah. So that's good that he switched that thing out, because that was <laughs> that thing is a problem. Um Sableye. Flamethrower does a lot in the sun. Um, if I'm at plus one special defense, still does a lot, not quite as much. I mean, I could potentially stall out the, uh, stall out the sun. But I think I just want a toxic. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go for the toxic. Um, yeah, that Mudsdale is definitely nasty. I need to not let it get a stamina boost and get an icicle crash off with the, with my Weavile. That's probably going to do like 70-80% looking like from the calc, at least. If it's not at plus one, that is. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a tough situation. I mean, Like I said, his team just puts a lot of pressure on. The matchup is kind of weird, so I just have to be real careful. I mean, Weavile can really put in work once I get it in, so I might have to sack off some Mons and continuously get Weavile in. Um, we know this thing can't be Scarfed, so Weavile can take this on pretty well. I mean, it's a life orb Weavile, man. It's going to hit so hard. So hard. We just have to... We should have to not miss. Um, go for the Toxic. We land. There's a Solar Beam. Okay. Predicting a switch, probably. Uh, gets another crit. Jeez. Um, that's fine. Um, so, I, f I think I'm going to go for the Recover. Because that Solar Beam did 82 with a crit. Um, I feel like I can live one more. So, I'm going to Recover up. Uh, I feel like a fire move is incoming, but if I lose Sableye, it's not that big of a deal. So we wasted one turn. We used one turn of sun. Uh, this will be another. And I'll only have three left. So I'm just going to go for the recover. I could double in two, actually. But I don't... Yeah, Sableye doesn't really, isn't really doing a whole lot for me. I'd rather get a safe switch into, like, my Infernape or something. We go for the recover. We've seen Air Slash. We eat that. So I want to calc that damage, actually, because that didn't look like it did a whole lot. 47 and a half. 47.5. Oh, wow. Wait. That's a plus one. Um, no, it looks about right. Um, yeah, not looking like modest. Not modest unless it, for some reason, doesn't have some investment somewhere. Uh, he might not have a fire move. I'm just going to recover again. Probably fire moving coming here. See the fire blast. That's fine. Um, so we get some more intel on this thing. Um, and I'm pretty free to go into... Pretty free to go into Caesar. Um... Or I could go into you... But no, you're not gonna you're not gonna eat a, a solar beam. Ninety-five. Hmm. This is a tough switch here. How much is a flare blitz in the sun doing to Mudsdale? Flare blitz in the sun. Let's see how much it does to Zard first. Flare blitz is fifty to fifty-six to sixty-seven. So we have a chance to kill here. Mudsdale. Um, there's the sun. It does a lot. So, so let's see, 65, and then it goes to plus one defense, and we do 40. Okay, so we take it. We take out the Mudsdale. Um, in the sun. Okay, I'm gonna go into. I'm gonna go into eight, and I don't think he's gonna stay in here. I think he's gonna predict the predict the rock slide or maybe a u-turn and I can go for flare blitz um, Mudsdale is pretty obvious but flare blitz is gonna hurt whatever he wants to go into flare blitz is really gonna hurt um, yeah flare blitz is gonna hurt anything I mean it has a chance to kill the Zard here has a chance to kill I don't think he's gonna stay in I think the Zard's a little bit too valuable to him in general 
Um, yeah, so we'll see. Two Flare Blitz takes out the Mudsdale. It's going to do a lot of recoil damage to me. There's the Mudsdale. We do 79, gets the stamina boost. We take a good chunk of damage, but now I can just go for another Flare Blitz. Uh, very free. Zydog is not going to want to take this, especially in the sun. Um, this sun is really helping me out with this Flare Blitz here. Um, so there's the Mudsdale. We saw the lefties. Yeah, there's nothing else to, to write down. Um, obviously, there's our Mega. So nothing's going to want to take this. He's going to have to reset Sun if he wants to have it up again. So we did a good job stalling out those turns. We did lose the Sableye, but Mudsdale's very weakened. Um, almost anything is going to be able to take it out. So I'm pretty confident in where we are now um, with this Mudsdale weakened. Uh, definitely sets up Weavile to do really well in the endgame now again. Um, with the Zard weakened, we're good. We just need to get rid of or get, yeah, we need to get rid of or severely weaken the Coco. And then we should be pretty good to go with the Weavile. Um, I'm not worried too much about Differential. I mean, if it comes down to it, I'll, I'll worry about it. But I'm more worried about getting a W. Um, wins are just wins are what's gonna wins are what's important right now. Um, we're we're like 15 Differential points behind first place behind the Buja Cavaliers. So I'm not I'm not concerned about that. Um, I don't think we're gonna <laughs> we're not really we're not gonna catch that. Um, but wins are what's gonna matter here. So we're going to see what he wants to do. Um, it did a, a lot of damage. Uh, because I knew he would go into this thing predict, like trying to get the stamina boost again. So definitely didn't have the best checks for Mudsdale, but I think we're playing around it just fine. Um, yeah, let's see what he wants to do. Oh boy. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm nervous as usual. I'm always nervous for these battles. I always get nervous going into something competitive. Um, it's just who I am. I, I'm very competitive, so I like to win. I don't like to lose. I'm very competitive, so just going into anything competitive, I get nervous because I feel a lot of pressure to win, whatever it is. So let's see what he wants to do. Um, you know, I feel like sacking off Mudsdale is his best call here because he says he really wants something else to take Flare Blitz damage. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> it's gonna hurt, man. Um, I'd like to try to wish Caesar back up if I can. To get some more flare blitzes off later, um, but if I can only get EQs or rock slides off, that's fine as well. Um, if I need to let Infernape go to get an earthquake off on top of Coco, that's fine also. So that could be something that happens later down the road if I need to weaken it so that Ice Shard can take it out. I'm actually gonna start calcing Ice Shard. Boom. Versus Venusaur, Sunsweeper. Ice Shard does, wow, 63 to 75, that's really nice. Coco, that's 32 to 38, okay, so yeah. Um, we should be okay. Uh, we're in a pretty decent spot here, putting a lot of offensive pressure on with the Infernape, which I knew it would be able to do in this matchup. Um, I mean, Paul's another potential opponent in the playoffs as well, so picking up information, even if I if I don't win, uh, getting information about his team and what he, likes to, what he would like to bring against me, what I can learn for next time is fine. Um, we've clinched a playoff spot at this point, I believe. Pretty sure we've clinched a playoff spot. Um, so, we'll see what happens. Alright, so we knock out Ape. Kills Mudsdale. With Flare Blitz. Okay, so we see... We got rid of the Mudsdale, which is really nice for my team, considering, like I said, I was a bit underprepared for it. Um, we're probably going to see something like, if, if a Greninja is Scarf, we'll probably see it come in at this point. He's probably going to think I'm Scarf 8. Um, might not know I'm Adamant, which could be cool. Uh, he, could, he could think I'm Banded, but I am just Adamant. could think I'm like E-Belt, or, you know, Flame Plate. So we might see Greninja. I'm thinking we either see a Greninja or a Coco. Um, Charizard's also an option, but... It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, because we can still do a ton of damage to that thing. Um, but, I mean, Zard's an option, potentially. So, let's see But that's one Jolteon switching that we got rid of. So I can start Volt switching all over the place if I need to uh, pretty soon. I have a, a good switch into Zydog. So we shall see. We shall see, we shall see, we shall see. See what we can see. Let's see what he wants to go for. 
I'm very curious where he's going to go from here because he doesn't have the best answers to Flare Blitz. He's got quote-unquote resist like quote-unquote resistances, but I wouldn't really consider Greninja, Zygarde 10%, or Mega Charizard Y a resistance. Uh, we see the Aura Break, obviously. I don't think it gets anything else. Uh, well, it gets Power Construct. Um, and I'm going to double... I'm just going to follow the game plan. I'm going to double into the thing. Uh, I'm going to follow the game plan. Um, yeah. There's a thousand arrows. We eat it. So it did 14% with the Shuka. 14% with the Shuka. I don't think that's banded damage. Yeah, that's not banded damage. So we get rid of the band. Yeah, that's not banded. Um, that's actually really nice. So I could go for an Ice Punch. Uh, I don't I don't think he's gonna want to stay in but what's his switch like ice punch chips down his team yeah I just go for ice punch um, you want to go for another thousand arrows it's fine I don't think this thing gets anything that can really hit the thing very well plus we have solid rock and super high defenses um, but ice punch is gonna start chipping down his team this thing could be focus sash which wouldn't so hold on let me see without the shuka um, let me see without the Shuka. We take 25 to 30. I think it's worth it to get rocks up here. I think it's definitely worth it to, to break a potential Sash on this thing or the Greninja. So I think rocks is totally worth it. I'm going to write down 1,000 arrows. So changing my play up, I think rocks is more worth it. Um, because this... The thing isn't like super important in this matchup. Um, it's really just here for the Zydog. Because it was, it was such a big threat. So I think rocks are going to be worth it. It's only defogger is the Tapu Koko, which obviously can have defog. It's a it's a decent defogger. But that's funny. I was going to bring Passimian to try to take advantage of that defog on Coco um, and like switch in, get the defiant boost and then, you know, do some do some damage, but it just didn't end up fitting into the team. I would have had to run it scarfed and it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. I didn't want to run dual fighting scarfers even though Infernape doesn't have a fighting move. So Let's see what he wants to do here. I feel like I'm in a really good position. Um, I have control of this match. Um, I mean, it's 5-5, but I'm definitely putting more pressure on at the moment. Um, you know, this, this Thousand Arrow is only going to do 25 to 30 if he goes for it. Uh, if he wants to switch, it would probably be into, like, a, a Coco or a Greninja. Doesn't really have any other switches into an Ice Punch. Could switch into Zard, predicting an EQ. But even that's kind of risky. Because I could potentially have a rock move, which would make... Excuse me, I apologize. Which would make a lot of sense. <clears throat> but we shall see, we shall see. Um, I mean, I wonder what, he, what he's thinking about. There's not a whole lot to think I mean, I guess there's a lot to think about, but... Just trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Paul's style is very... He likes to predict exactly what his opponent is going to do. And make moves based off of that. Uh, my style, I do like to predict, but I try to make the safest play. Not the safest play, but I try to make the best play based on the situation. So, like, worst case scenario, if this happens, what can I do after that? You know, so in this case, it'll be like, okay, worst case scenario, it goes to Venusaur or Greninja. And what do I do next? Well, I'd probably go into Jolteon because I'm Assault Vested. Or I could go into, you know, into something like Infernape uh, on the, uh, the Venusaur. So, I mean, I'd probably go into Jolteon either way. Because I do have answers for the Coco, if necessary. There's a Mega Charizard Y. Wow. That's a switch. That is some switch. Now, this Solar Beam is definitely going to take me out. But I'm just going to cart Calc it just in case. Yeah. <laughs> that does so much damage. Yo, imagine if I rock slided. If I rock slid. Um... I kind of want to go into Caesar predicting the Solar Beam. I kind of want to go into Caesar predicting the Solar Beam. Um, Fire Blast is going to take me out. Air Slash obviously will. Um, it's a tough one. next turn of toxic damage like if he stays in here then he can't switch back into rocks what am i willing to sack off 
We haven't used the Kevia Berry, but we can't live unless we unless we wish. Um, I mean Caesar's Caesar's so important to this match. I feel like I could go into blue. So that, I mean that was a good switch on his part. I mean we can't take two hits from this thing. This thing's so strong. It's ridiculous. Um I'm gonna go jolt. Because, uh, let me calc Jolteon first. Because we have the Assault Vest, we have some investment. Um, he goes for Fire Blast. What are we at? I mean, we live a Fire Blast. You know, so I think I'm going to go Jolt. I feel like it's a pretty decent play. There's a Solar Beam. So we saw that. <clears throat> Can't switch into Rocks again. So I am going to force the switch out with the Volt Switch. Um, I see no reason not to. I see no reason to force the switch out with the Volt Switch, so I am going to go for it. Um, if he switches out, can't switch back into Rocks unless he defogs. If he goes on a Zygarde, it's just not in the best position either way. I can definitely double into uh, Rhyperior, which would be pretty nasty to him. Pretty detrimental, because the Sash is broken if he has the Sash on Zydog or even Greninja. Um, and that Ice Punch is, is going to knock out the Zydog. It'll probably do a decent chunk to Greninja, if I'm being honest. I don't really think Calcing it's necessary. So I'm just going to Volt Switch. Um, you know, force him out. He either has to switch and dies upon entry, unless he defogs, or he dies to the Volt Switch. And then I can bring in Ape. And I'm free to U-turn. So I think I'm in a pretty good spot here. Um... Yeah, I mean, I feel I feel really good about where we're at right now. Um, he kind of had to go for a Solar Beam, because if he went for a Fire Move and I Rock Slid, this thing died, and he lost a lot of momentum there. Um, so his Sun Turns are, are, we, are, are slowly wasting away. After this, I'll only have two left, which I can potentially take advantage of with a Flare Blitz. Um, getting, getting Ape in here and just Flare Blitzing is not the worst idea in the world. We know that the we know that the Zydog is not banded, so we know that. Um, we haven't seen anything else. We've only seen those three Mons. Well, no, we've seen Coco too. So we haven't seen Gren. We haven't seen Greninja or Gren and Venusaur. We haven't seen those two Mons yet. So let's see what he wants to do. There's a Rishu. Huh. Let's see if he says anything. Um, Alright, Paul. Come on, man. Make your move. Let's see what... Let's see what Paul wants to do. I mean... So, let's see. I mean, he goes for a fire move. Or he, he stays in and goes for anything. I, I Volt Switch and I knock it out. He switches out into Zydog. I Volt Switch obviously doesn't work. And I can switch into Rhyperior. Take one. Potentially take another one. Ice Punch. Switches into Greninja. It might die. But it's going to do a lot of damage either way. Venusaur might be a good switch. Alright, so we Volt Switch. We get rid of the Megazard Y. That's really nice. Sun is gone. Kills. Zard. With. Volt Switch. So the Zard is gone. Um, I feel like. I feel like Caesar's my best play. I feel like Caesar is just the best play here. Or I could go in a Frozone and like force him to go Coco. Huh? Nah, because I don't want to. I don't want to potentially bring in the Gren. Um, Caesar's my best play because I can. I can U-turn. I'm faster. I don't think the Coco's scarfed. I don't think the Coco's scarfed. Um. Yeah, I don't. I really don't think the Coco's scarfed. If it is, good on him. The Gren might be Scarfed. I think either the Greninja or the Zydog are Focus Sash. I think one of them is Focus Sash. By the way he played the Zygarde, I'm thinking it's the Zygarde. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, it could just be like, it could just be Lum. 
Um, could just be Lum. So, yeah, I don't know, but I, I'm thinking one of them is Focus Sash. I'm, I, I just have a feeling. <laughs> um, Venusaur is not a terrible switch here to take advantage of the Sun Turns left. Uh, it does outspeed, which could potentially be a problem, but I feel like Solveon's a pretty safe switch. And that just wastes another turn of Sun. So I think I'm okay. Um, and he's really thinking hard this battle. He's really, really thinking hard. Um, I don't think this battle is going to go my normal like 60, 70 turn whatever battle. Eh, most, most of them like 30, 40 turns. I don't think it's going to go this long. I think it's going to be faster in terms of turns. Um, let's see. Let's see. What you got, Paul? What you got? We're going to see what he wants to do now. Um, I mean, Greninja might be his best play. I, he knows I'm Scarf though here. He knows I at least am most likely Scarfed to him in his eyes. So I'm I'm not thinking anything is Scarfed on his team at this point. I don't think the Greninja Scarfed. I don't think the Coco's Scarfed. Whatever he, he probably thinks I have the cl the close combat too for the Gren. So that is that is potentially a thing. Um, I feel like if he had Earthquake on Venusaur, that would be his play. I don't think yeah I don't think I have enough speed. There's the Venusaur. Okay. So, we see the Venusaur. Takes Rock's damage. I feel like my best play is the Sylveon. And here's why. Going to Sylveon, I take whatever. I can protect. Waste that last turn of Sun. He doesn't have any more Sun turns for this thing. I can come back in with Infernape and go for a Flare Blitz. Or I can just go... Or I can come in with Weavile go for a Flare Blitz. Um... I'm really feeling an Earthquake. I think Sylveon is my best play either way. And if, if he just Sludge Bombs, I can go... Can I go Frozone at that point? I'm afraid of a Sludge Bomb. Oh, wait, I have the Kebby Berry, so we're living anyway. Boom. We're going to switch to Sylveon. Uh, sludge Bomb, I have the Kebby Berry, like I just mentioned, so a Sludge Bomb is not going to kill. There's a Z Acid Downpour. Can we live, Kebby Berry? We live it! Awesome. Um, so we see Poison Z. Poison Z. Um, we saw the Acid Downpour. I'm assuming Sludge Bomb. And now I'm very free to just protect. Very free to protect. Loses the sun. Yeah, loses the sun. Um, after this turn. So I think protect is my best play. Because then it won't outspeed me anymore. And I can come in with the um, my Infernape. Just Flare Blitz. I could wish... I mean, either way, Sylveon's going to die. Which is fine. I don't really need Sylveon. Like, it was my main... Like, I've basically lost both my Greninja checks at this point. But, if it's Scarfed, we can play around it. If it's not Scarfed, we outspeed it with Greninja. I mean, with uh, Infernape. And with Weavile. So, I feel like we can figure out how to play around it <clears throat> pretty well. So, I'm not too, too concerned in this point in time. Yeah, we protect... We see the Sludge Bomb. <clears throat> Sun is gone. Um, I need to keep you alive for Coco. And for potentially the Gren. I mean, like, we have options. We have options here. Um, I feel like it, letting Blue go down is just the best play. Let's check a Flare Blitz. Versus the... Uh, the Venusaur. Oh yeah, Flare Blitz <laughs> absolutely destroys it. I don't even know why that was a question. Uh, I'm just going to wish. You know, why not? There's a Giga Drain. Get some health back. Giga Drain. Um, I'll check here real quick. Okay. 
Caesar is easily the best play. Flare Blitz is just going to do a crap load of damage. Um, and I feel like there's no reason not to go for it. Yeah, absolutely. We, I mean, we scarfed uh, Chlorophyll. No. <laughs> but, I mean, we already saw that he wasn't scarfed because he mixed up the moves. That's just what I was thinking in my head if he had gone for it. But even so, I'm scarfing that outspeed. And I, I was EV'd outspeed to Scarf Shandy, so I'd outspeed this thing as well. So we're in a good spot. Um, nothing wants to switch into a Flare Blitz. Um, I'm still going to be cautious of a potential Scarf Coco or Scarf Gren. Or Scarf Zygarde. I, I don't really think that's a thing, but it's possible. It's possible for, uh, for my man Caesar here. We knock out the Venusaur with Ape. Ape gets another kill. Ape kills Venusaur with Flare Blitz. I love Infernape so much. If you didn't know, it's my favorite. It's my favorite Pokemon. Infernape is. It's so good. I love it so much. I'm thinking it's Scarfed. Um, I'm just gonna go with the safe play and go into my Rhyperior. I can always come in an Ice Shard if I need to. There's a thousand arrows. We eat it up. Um, Ice Punch is a good play, probably my best play, and that's what I'm going to go for. Um, if he switches, it is what it is. If he switches, it is what it is. Does EQ kill? <clears throat> he, Paul really likes to take his time. Paul really likes to take his time, doesn't he? Um, if I were to have Earthquake, it doesn't kill from here. I mean, I'm assuming he thinks I'm defensive. Calking that damage. I'm pretty sure Paul... Yeah, I'm pretty sure Paul run cal runs calcs. Um, I know he does outside of battle. I'm pretty sure he does in battle, too. Um, so Earthquake is a... Ch er, Earthquake doesn't kill from here if I don't have any invest or if I have, like, the eight that I do have in attack. Um, I guess his best switch would be Gren. I, I don't want to rock slide because I feel like it's unnecessary. I was thinking about running Mach Punch on my Infernape for the Gren, for a potential Scarf Gren, like Scarf Mach Punch for a potential Scarf Gren. That would have been cool. But I just couldn't fit it on. I felt like I needed Rock Slide and Earthquake just in case he brought... Because like, it was Earthquake for the Coco and Rock Slide for the Zard, and I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't give up one of those. I couldn't give up being able to hit one of them, and I can't... <laughs> I... I can't personally make an Infernape set without U-Turn, unless it's a setup set. And I rarely use a setup set with, in, with Infernape. So, I just, I can't get myself to do it. I love U-Turn Infernape so much. I just love Infernape. It's so good. It's so good. That's its 14th kill of the season. It hasn't died yet. Knock on wood. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean... EQ might clean this game up. Infernape. Uh, EQ does 54 to 64. It does a good chunk to Coco. Might get, has a chance to kill after rocks. Good chance to kill after rocks. Greninja takes a good chunk from, from EQ. So if I can weaken his team, EQ could potentially clean up. There's a Gren. Um, the Ice Punch is real. So now what are my options? Now what are my options? Um. Hmm. Now what are my options? So now I'm worried about seeing a Scarf. I feel like Weavile doesn't have as much. It's either Weavile or... I could go into Weavile. Um, Hydro Pump doesn't kill. He's max special attack. Hmm. That might not be the worst play, because I could potentially knock off whatever he has. Um, I mean, I don't mind letting Weavile go at this point. This thing beats Zydog. So does Weavile. Um, 
See, if he's scarfed and I don't do that, it's really rough. What does Jolt do? Jolt takes a Hydro Pump. Let's see Specs. 363. Well, if he's Specs, then he's not Scarf. So I feel like letting this thing go is the best play. I'm going to Rock Slide. Because I can always Ice Shard with the Weavile to take out the Zydog. I mean, I can sack something off if I need to. I'd rather sack off Jolteon <laughs> than, uh, than Infernate. But if I need to, if Infernate needs to go, Infernate needs to go. I mean, it's, we're, it's a team game here. Wow, he gunk shotted, and it misses. We go for the rock side. It does a lot. Wow. Why would he gunk shot? That makes no sense. That makes absolutely no sense. Why would... The Jolteon? I'm terribly confused. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Rishi just said, I'm not sure there are words that can adequately describe what a terrible play that was. <laughs> um, Ice Punch is the play. If he switches up moves, we're good. If he's scarfed, we get that information and we can play around it. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, we can play around it. There's a surf. Fine. You see, he switches it up. Um, Gren kills. Kills Rhyperior. Oh, I lost. Oh, wait, I'm right in the Sylveon kill. With surf. Um, we'll kill Sylveon. Oh, it was the, the Venu. Venusaur kills Sylveon. Giga Drain. So we know this thing is not choice. We have not seen an item, but we know it is not a choice item. We've not seen an item, but we know it's not a choice item. It should be six... Mudsdale. Right. Did I write in the Sableye kill? What the heck? I didn't write in the Sableye kill. Um, who killed Sableye? Uh, was it Mudsdale? No, it was Zard. Zard. I, I'm just taking too long for no reason. Kill Sableye. With Fire Blast. To figure this stuff out. Okay. Um, Ape's the play. Ape and U-turn. Yeah, Ape and U-turn's the play. Ape and U-turn is 100% the play. Um, hold on one second. My girlfriend's texting me. So, if I kill the, the Gren here, that's awesome. And then, I would just go into Jolteon, honestly, and I could let that thing die if I need to. I, see, I... Yeah, um, I apologize. Um, he leaves Gren in here, it dies, which would be nice. Um, 
I'm not sure what I'd go into at that point. I feel like I need both Jolteon and Weavile, but I don't need Ape. Which is weird. Because either, the, like, the Coco and the Zygarde could still both be Scarfed. Or one of them could be Scarfed. So, Ape. Kills. Gren. With U-Turn. I feel like Frozone's the play. Coco's still at 100%, which is dangerous. Um, <laughs> Calcan Weavile and Coco. It doesn't do half, which is a problem. How much does the Zygarde do to us? So